Malaysia for example if you go to Indonesia Mumadis ulama Indonesia MUI where they have DSN under there they want Sharia national that overs have oversight on all bankings in, and, and capital market for example so they are not within the regulation and they are totally independent nobody can even say anything on the DSN and this is claimed to be sign of independence it can be one of the reasons why we say that because of they are totally detached, they are independent. But being together within the regulatory framework does not in any way mean that people are not independent. I wish that we can invite from time to time people to come to the meeting of Shara Valley Council, which I don't think we can do for that matter. But if we can have time of parliament, for example, where you can come and see how the members of parliament debate, you may get surprised that. Sometimes you see how the scholars discuss, how, how, how the scholars decide, and, and I happen to be the youngest so far there, also in many years already. So every time you want to go against the, not the, the elder man, the more experienced people there, you tend to be more nicer. Yeah. What is your point of view? And most of the time, before a decision is made, we will have a long debate. Before Indonesia. I give an example. In the morning just now, we got a meeting of Sharia Advisory Council. So, you know, we have two issues there. The chairman that time said that, look, we want to finish before 12.15 and we have five agenda. I said, are you sure? Uh, we try, we try, we try. That's the word, try. And then we have a meeting. The first agenda comes, we have two issues. We have two issues on that one agenda. You know, before we invite, normally we will invite the, 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 the proposer to come and propose to us and to explain what they want to do and everything for us to understand. But beforehand, we discuss among ourselves also the basic understanding of the proposal. You know, what happened is that one, of the, one issue number one, we have deliberated on the issue for two hours. Suddenly we said, look, look, look. We, okay, now we get the general uh, understanding. We were divided at that time. Some say yes, some say no. Some even said... I don't think we can allow this. Some said, I think I'm comfortable with this, this situation. We invited them in. Suddenly they said that we have changed a little bit. I said, my God. After two hours of deliberation, then a slight change to the structure changed the opinion after that. So that's to show that I wish that we can invite people to come and see how the debate was. How, how the debate is. To, to show people that the worry about non-independence was not there at all. Never been an issue of independence. Central bankers, they know my opinion on certain aspect that I'm, I, I, I personally may not be agreeable to some of the decision. And I also know some of the decision that we made were not agreeable by some of the members. But we are acting in totally independent way. I hope, I see some of the committee in the bank uh, sitting here also, I hope you can practice the same in your organization. Don't worry about what the management will say to you. Previously, we don't have mechanism to protect you. Now, if they suggest to remove you, they cannot remove any Sharia members of the Sharia committee in the bank without approval from Sharia Advisory Council of Bank Negara Malaysia. So any appointment or any dismissal or any retirement, even retirement of any members of Sharia committee cannot be done without the approval of Sharia Advisory Council. So if the board of directors in one way or another see you as a little bit, what, uh, what we call, vocal, for example, see you as vocal against the BOD, for example, you, have to, you don't have to worry at all because he or they cannot dismiss you without our approval. So you don't have to worry on that. They can't do that. If you want to retire, that's a different issue. Lah. Okay? If you feel that I couldn't take any more, even if you want to retire, we have one proposal before, a shy member wants to retire. That proposal for retirement from him has to go to SAC as well. Because our worry is that they may be, we don't have that, that case, but sometimes you have to be hypothetical in that manner. There may be a situation where the Sharan member of the committee cannot take it anymore. And the bank, instead of trying to force him to resign, put him in a situation where he himself will resign. So we worry that he may want to resign, not because he wants to resign, because 
he has no other way to go anymore. So he put a letter of resignation. And we have a little bit problem in accepting that. Even his resignation has to go to us. So we will investigate first whether his resignation because he wants to really resign, because he wants to resign, or because he was in a way forced to resign. We have one case before. These scholars, uh, a, a good scholar and, and my, 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 my teacher as well, he wanted to resign. And I asked him personally, why you want to resign? He said, I want to go back home, to Kampung. That's it. That one you cannot say anything. And to show that he is serious in resigning, he resigned from all his work that he has. Teaching university, he resigned. Some of the non-financial membership, he also resigned. And also the bank, he was there, he resigned as well. I hope I don't have sleep of time to mention the bank and the person. So he resigned for every day. That shows to us that he resigned and he wanted to resign simply because he wants to resign. That's it. We have no problem with that. So don't worry. You have our uh, assurance that we will allow you to practice the way that you should be doing in your Shire advisory meeting. You are free to do that. So some, some of the points that we have here, uh, I think I skipped this, the background, the importance of Shire compliance, uh, the principle of ISB, for example, I think this is you can read on your own. But the last one is important. Even though, uh, sorry, the ISB recognized that there is no single model to approach for all countries, all jurisdictions. Nevertheless, I believe still, with my humble opinion, that the one that we have in Malaysia is among the most, uh, among the best one that we have in the world. Uh, and Sharia governance framework is not about focusing only about the Sharia committee or the Sharia board. Rather, it emphasizes on all the processes, including the role of BOD, the role of uh, man, uh, senior management, the role of Sharia advisor, the role of, the role of Sharia committee, the role of Sharia department, the role of even audit people to ensure that the compliance of, to the Sharia is done pre, during, and post uh, Sharia endorsement at the Sharia advisory in the Islamic banking and finance. As I said, it's not about reaching one opinion. It's about the procedure. The opinion may be different. Bank A, for example, may have one opinion. Bank B may have B opinion. We are not saying that Bank A opinion is much better than B opinion. As long as the procedures are there, all the procedures of reaching at that opinion is followed. To me, both opinions are valid. We at SSC of Ben Negara Malaysia, for example, we don't force people to accept our opinion. For example, Bank Negara Malaysia accept and allow Bayul Inah, for example. It's up to the bank whether they want to have Bayul Inah or not. Rojhi, up till today, they don't recognize Bayul Inah and they don't apply Bayul Inah. So to us, we are not, uh, the, the simple calculation is that if we say yes, you may have no. But if me, we say no, you cannot have yes. So a product may be approved at your bank's level. A product may be approved at the bank's level. Shana committee view it yes. But when it comes to Ben Negara Malaysia, if Ben Negara decided otherwise, of course it is not a dictator kind of shape. I say no, no, not in that manner. Most of the time, they will come and present. If they are not happy, they come back again and again till we feel satisfied with that. Right? That again to show independence of both parties. So there is no such a way that I say yes, then I call my friend at Managara, hey, I just say yes, lah, please, I say yes, until belanja you makan. It never worked in that manner. So all are independent in that. So whatever that we say yes, is up to you whether you want to apply or not. But whatever that we say no, you cannot have in your bank. That is to ensure standardization and harmonization of opinion for that matter. Okay, this is some of the points to ponder. Uh, one tier or two tier Sharia governance framework, composition of the members, procedures in obtaining pronouncement, how to deal with pronouncement, so forth and so on. Okay, one tier or two tier, vary from one practice to another. Of course, there are pros and cons here and there, whether you have one layer or two layer. In Malaysian practice, you, we have one what we call two tiers Sharia governance. At the bank level, we have Sharia governance at the bank's level. And at the bank negara level, we have another tiers of governance. In some countries, 
the one that you have here, for example, this is the country that we have. If I may put there some of the countries that you have, the Malaysia, Malaysia, I think we have discussed already. Pakistan, for example, Pakistan is another country which they don't apply the two tiers uh, Sharia compliance. Well, even though they have Sharia supervisory board at the bank negara level, at central bank level, so state bank of Pakistan level, SBP level, nevertheless, the SBP of the central bank is only for them. They don't regulate what they have on the bank's level, at the bank's level. Uh, and there is no regulation that any members of SBP cannot sit on other banks. Nevertheless, the Sharia advisor for State Bank of Pakistan, they have two. Sharia advisor and Sharia uh, advisory board. Sharia advisor for the time being is Dr. Imran. He cannot sit in other than one bank at bank's level. But Sharia advisory board themselves, they can sit in whatever bank that they want. There is no restriction as such. Quit, they have their way. UAE, they have their own way. I think you are aware of what new development in UAE. What happened, no, no, in Dubai only, sorry. What they have done is that they have voluntarily formed a group of scholars. Uh, got the opportunity to be there. They have formed a group of scholars which they will look at this group as kind of supreme body. But there is no regulation for that. Means that because the regulator does not initiate that thing, the scholars themselves try to formulate a situation where they are a supreme body kind of that oversee what are doing in the bank. So any products new in the bank will be presented to that body. This is effectively what we are doing by regulation. They try to emulate because regulator have not initiated that, they put that <coughs> DF, DFSA, Dubai Financial Services Authority, for example, the IFC, for example, last two days, I was there last, 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 last two weeks, last two days they have discussed the new governance framework for Sharia in the, IF, the IFC. One of the things that they discussed is that for them to allow the possibility of one board member of a bank. One board member of a bank. So say, for example, a bank wants to establish a window within the IFC, not the proper mainland uh, UAE, eh? the IFS, IFC, for example, for them to allow only one man to become the... It's not Sharan Advisor Board, anyway. Sharan Advisor for the whole window. For the whole window. Whether we should allow that or not, for that matter. So Bahrain, they have their own way. Qatar, they have their own way. The only country so far that have the one that we have is that Malaysia and to certain extent also Indonesia for that in terms of two tiers Sharia governance. Indonesia, their restriction is different.